In recent years, you've heard a lot about cord cutting and the emergence of digital service platforms such as YouTube and Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime and so on and so forth and how television viewership in general is decreasing. And that is true. Those are not false statements to make because those are realities of what we're seeing. However, it is also a reality that if you are a company putting out an entertainment product, there is far more guaranteed money in the traditional form of media like television. Like the internet is great and the internet can be wonderful, but sometimes even with the potential for the increased domestic and international exposure that can come along with that, the advertising revenues, frankly, just haven't caught up. When you do comparisons of traditional ad rates for newspaper ads in years past and you put them up against digital and website ad spaces for today, there's no comparison. The traditional paper uh, print ads went out big time. And when you look at WWE, the single most important thing they have, even with getting $200 million over a few years from Saudi Arabia to run a bunch of events there, even with all the live events they do with the WWE Network and the merch sales and WWE Studios and all these other things that they've put their hands into the cookie jar on, easily the bedrock of their business is the television deal. Period. You look at their current television deal, with the domestic and international package, you're going around $200 million a year, a little bit north of that. When you separate that out and you just talk strictly about Raw and SmackDown, which are both under the NBC Universal umbrella, you're talking about somewhere between 160 to $180 million a year for three hours of Raw every week and two hours of SmackDown Live. And thinking about that from a company standpoint, five hours of television a week multiply that by 52 weeks in a year that's what 260 hours of total television and you get just a shade south of 200 million dollars a year to do that that is an incredibly nice place to build the foundation of your business around and if you break that down even more and you look at what that means for the raw portion versus the smackdown portion if we're assuming a 60-40 split, because Raw is 60% of the time on NBC Universal each week for WWE and SmackDown's the other 40%, if we look at the high number of about $180 million a year on the domestic television deal, that's $108 million for Raw and $72 million for SmackDown Live. It's a pretty good number, and the funny thing is about it is it was a really disappointing deal when it was signed in 2014. Like I thought this company was going to get a lot more money, especially when you looked at what NASCAR ended up getting in their television deal. UFC was already locked up. I thought, and I know the WWE most certainly thought, the marketplace was going to be stronger for them. There was going to be more competition for them. And as a result, the WWE was going to be able to double or two and a half times what they were currently getting. And it didn't happen and stocks dove at that time as a result of that, it was a really disappointing thing. You think if you get a 50% pay raise, you're probably ecstatic. But if you expect it based off of market conditions and your performance to get a 150, 200% you know, increase or even a 100% increase and you only got 50%, then you're looking at it and you're saying, wow, that underwhelmed significantly. And at that time, there just wasn't as much interest in WWE. I don't think there was ever really a fear that they were going to leave NBC Universal and USA Network. Um, so as a result, WWE had very little to almost no leverage. Combined with back in 2014, four years ago, where you're talking about the WWE Network launching and a lot of uncertainty there, you know, expecting to get somewhere between 100 to 200% more on the television deal just wasn't feasible or realistic. It was frankly bad timing. It almost, when you look back in retrospect, means the WWE probably should have launched the WWE Network a year early um, than what they did. And it had a major impact, I believe, 
on the television deal that they were able to get in 2014. Well, as we all know, the WWE's current television deal with NBC Universal expires, I believe it's in 2019 at some point in time. So now we're getting to the point where WWE is starting to look ahead. WWE is in a position where they're trying to maximize the juice for the squeeze. They're trying to get as much chop as possible. And this week we saw reports be released talking about how the WWE is looking at having Raw stay with the USA Network, but SmackDown Live potentially ending up somewhere else. But for the Raw brand itself, the reports are that the company's looking at getting upwards of three times the current value just for Raw. If true, that would be an astonishing, overwhelming victory of WWE, no matter what you think about the company, to take that three-hour brand that's Raw on Monday night and very quickly take it from making $108 million a year for you or so, somewhere around there, 100 to 110, and get it to where it brings you 300 to 320 or 325 million a year, and nothing's really fundamentally changed in terms of your product. In fact, your viewership has declined just a little bit, and the quality of your product most certainly hasn't increased, and in fact, you've slashed your production values and done other things to cut costs. That is a massive, significant win for the company, if true. Now, it hasn't been announced officially, and these are preliminary reports, but you're talking about up to 300 million and a little bit more just for Raw, where they're currently getting 160 to 180 million a year for both Raw and SmackDown. That's huge. And with the reports talking about SmackDown likely to get a new home, it looks like Fox could be a prime player for them, which means potentially either A, SmackDown Live could end up airing on network television with night and time slot to be determined, which could potentially allow the WWE to reach even more homes because right now with USA Network, I think you're looking at about 95 to 100 million households. With Fox, you're looking at upwards of 110, if not a little bit more million. Wow. That would be another massive win for the company. Now, they could also end up having that show be relegated to FS1 with maybe some special events being shown on Fox, maybe in a weekend time slot. Now, they would reach fewer homes than USA, but they would still be aligning with Fox, who clearly is somebody that is very interested in acquiring some piece of the WWE product if not trying to eventually buy the company from Vince McMahon. You also, with splitting off SmackDown, have the ability to potentially lump NXT into the mix, which I would not be surprised if that is part of the negotiation for that one-hour show, where that could end up on an FS1 as well, and that would increase the value of that television deal even more. This is stunning. This is huge, and, and it's amazing because viewership has decreased in recent years. Interest in the product is not as great as it once was. There are a lot of factors that point to the WWE shouldn't be able to get this type of massive raise for mediocrity, but as so often is the case in the real working world, mediocrity gets rewarded and success gets punished. Vince McMahon is doing a masterful job of running a stock, not a company. There's a difference. And there most certainly is a difference from running a wrestling or sports entertainment company and running a stock. But there is no question that this company is doing a great job and Vince McMahon is doing a great job of running a stock, which as chairman of the board and CEO is what he ultimately matters to most to him because that's where the vast majority of his wealth is tied into. So it's not surprising that these reports got leaked to help do what? Massively increase the WWE stock price. I think it went up to over 43 bucks a share by the end of this week. And that's not a surprise at all to me. 
So what changed? How did this company go from four years ago significantly under delivering to expectations on a television deal to where it was really, really disappointing and was a bit of an embarrassment, even though they got 50% more to now we're talking about potentially three times the value for the raw portion of the deal and still being able to get even more money from SmackDown? What changed in four years with decreasing audience? How did this happen? Well, I think there's a few things. Number one, there's a better understanding of what the WWE Network is and isn't. Four years ago, there was concerns about was it going to kind of snipe a rifle off um, and siphon off the main product. And the simple truth of the matter is it really doesn't. It is a supplementary part of the product and presentation, not a primary part. Um, WWE has also over the past four years significantly increased but more so improved their digital footprint they they've slowly figured out the internet game more and more their presence on YouTube is massive they're one of the most subscribed to channels out there and with the amount of content that they put out there I mean they reach people all around the world um, and even in the face of the somewhat declining television viewership it's still important to note that both Raw and SmackDown Live are incredibly successful, highly rated cable television shows. Sure, they're not doing the numbers they did 15, 16 years ago, but a lot of other networks and a lot of other places aren't either. But for WWE and being on cable television, they are really damn good numbers. And as a consequence, you've got USA wanting to stay at the top of the heap and WWE most certainly helps keep them there both in terms of the viewership numbers and the ratings numbers that the WWE cranks out itself and how USA over the years has been able to build their identity and build their brand in large part off of the WWE by advertising and promoting their own shows during Raw having them Raw lead into those shows having those shows lead into Raw doing all those things WWE Network helped build USA and still provides significant value to this day. And when you look at USA, when you look at NBC Universal, the parent company, did they really want to lose the backbone of their network from so many years? The answer is not really, especially in the hyper competitive marketplace that it is, where you're trying to stem the tide and you're trying to minimize your losses in terms of your, your overall viewership imprint and your overall viewership. And then you also look at it for WWE, UFC just got a $750 million five-year reported deal with ESPN for their plus streaming service, whatever the hell it is. And they've got a new television deal, a new package looming in that space. So the money for UFC has increased significantly where, if I recall correctly, the original television deal with Fox was about a hundred million a year. And for the digital stuff on its own, they got a 50% increase compared to the television money. That's, that's crazy. So what happens is you look at these different factors and all of a sudden WWE has what they don't ha didn't have four years ago, leverage and quite a bit of it. They're not just dependent on NBC Universal anymore. They don't have to stay there. You've clearly got Fox interested big time especially with the digital stuff from ufc already going to espn and the reports talking about espn and nbc potentially splitting ufc's television package fox is looking at this and saying what happens if we lose ufc we need something comparable to a certain degree to replacement and wwe with its superior infrastructure and larger and longer foothold in the domestic and international marketplace makes a world of sense for them. And then you've got the digital companies out there, the Facebooks of the world, the Amazons of the world, the Netflixes, the Hulus and all of that. Now all of a sudden you're WWE, you're not looking for a handout. You're holding all the trump cards, if you will. You can pick and choose your spots and you can play one side against the other. Typically in order to create leverage and create it effectively, you need to have two bidders. The WWE at least has two bidders 
and probably more. Probably more. So now they look at it and they're just able to reap the rewards. It's a whole combination of factors that has really worked to WWE's advantage and they are taking advantage of it. And for that, I must applaud them. I salute them because there is no way in the world that anybody reasonably thought that this was going to happen, especially four years ago when the expectations were nowhere close to met, when it was supposed to be somewhere between a 100 to 150 or even 200% increase, and it was only 50%. You're thinking, okay, slightly declining viewership, but still important, still a highly rated program. Maybe their deal will end up with both Raw and SmackDown still on NBC Universal. Um, in their umbrella, maybe they'll get somewhere around 250 to 275 million, maybe 300 million if we're being really generous, another 50% or so increase at the cap, but that's for both products. And now we're talking about WWE being able to split them off and be able to get 300 million or slightly more just to keep raw three hours on Monday night on USA. And then potentially when you talk about the old one, two punch having a top rated cable program on a top rated cable network and then to follow that up by getting either on network television or worst case scenario FS1 entering the cable marketplace on a different place it's a master stroke by WWE and the market conditions have really drawn favorable for them this is crazy man and the hope for me is with this windfall of money, and there is no question, this would be a huge win and a huge windfall for the WWE is that they could take this product or this money and invest in their product. They can bring back some of the pyro. They can pay their people more. They can put more money into their product, more money into their shows, more money into everything, and still generate a larger profit margin. Like, it's one of those things that should be a win, win, win all the way freaking around. It is just amazing to me how fortunate WWE is that they benefit so much from other factors that they really don't control. UFC potentially leaving Fox. Fox has a, a gaping void they've got to fill. You know, WWE going to Facebook and doing that mixed match challenge. That was all about trying to create leverage for the next negotiations of the television deal like I talked about when that thing was announced. That's nice work if you can get it, WWE. You conning these networks into paying you a whole hell of a lot more than you frankly deserve based off of the merits of your product. <laughs> that, that's the American way. Rewarding mediocrity and punishing success. The WWE is mediocre, but they're doing a masterful job right now of running their stock and they are doing a masterful job of creating enough leverage to where they will really come out smelling like roses with this new television deal. This is not just a little bit of a news story. This is not just a somewhat big news story. This is a massive story for this company and will produce potentially a massive windfall. And they deserve respect for that, if nothing else.